Hello everyone. So this one is was a request um, from somebody on my Patreon, and they wanted me to discuss um, the mark of the beast. And I realised when discussing this this topic, I actually have to cover quite a lot of separate little topics to try and get the overall image of, of what to think about the mark of the beast and what it possibly could be. Um, and I'm doing this series right now, obviously, like this Remember series, where we go back and try and remember old topics and theories which may have been forgotten or buried under under time and, and other research. And one of these major things um, I was going to bring up, which I think is probably worth talking about now in regards to this Mark of the Beast idea, is the, um, the RFID chip, or the Radio Frequency Identification chip think that's what it represents off the top of my head <laughs> i'm pretty sure that's what it means um, and this was actually around ye years ago this was years in the making okay so this is this technology alone is probably maybe about maybe 15 years old when it was publicly being announced that it was kind of a thing maybe maybe that might be a bit too far back i'm not sure but i'm pretty sure this concept has been around for a very long time in terms of technology and i'm sure they've been mastering this this radio frequency chip f f for decades and making it smaller and smaller and smaller as the technology gets more and more advanced um, but there was this there was this fear wasn't there uh, among the early conspiracy theorists you know that they were doing a lot of research and there was this whistleblower i can't remember adam adam rousseau i think his name was aaron rousseau or something like that and he he did this interview where he was basically um in with the rockefellers he, he did business with these guys and they were laughing and joking one night, you know, and talking about the, the plan to basically uh, enslave all of mankind and get them all chipped. <laughs> and this Aaron guy was like, why? Why do you want to do this? Why are you doing this? You know what I mean? What's the what's the point? What's the end game? You know, and, and these guys are like, the end game is to get everyone chipped. <laughs> That's the end game. Um, and this fear arose you know this idea that if, if if they managed to get everybody to take this microchip and put this rfid chip into their own bodies then it means they can control all the money basically all the money's on the chip it's all a digital currency now no more paper no no more metal no more coins or physical money it's all digital and it's all on this microchip and the the advantages for the controllers obviously is that if you go against the agenda in any way they can just turn the money off and you can't buy or sell anything okay so this this chip seems to fit the perfect description so far for what was predicted to be um in the last uh, the last uh, throes of the devil's kingdom in the end days and it says in revelation 13 you know uh, this beast will arise who will who will perform many great tricks and wonders you know and th this guy will basically make uh, people worship this 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 image of a beast is described this image of this other beast that came before who died and resurrected uh, from a from a mortal head wound um and it also then says in a very cryptic strange way which um i will get into soon but it also says basically this guy will make you worship the image of the beast and it'll make it as though the image of the beast is alive and talking and it's just it's just bizarre language to describe something which they probably didn't really understand then and it's kind of the only way it, it, it gives off that vibe that they were trying to describe something they literally couldn't comprehend from their perspective and um i i am leaning towards this idea that it seems like they're talking about technology from our realm which they just didn't grasp um you know talking images for example is something we we understand quite well today but um you know images seeming alive then <laughs> would have been a, a miracle by our standards you know a, a thing to behold um so i think that's what they were describing but anyway on top on, on track it it basically says this beast will cause everybody uh, rich or poor old or young it doesn't matter what cast you're in or who you are what level you are at everything every single person everyone will have to be chipped um and no one will be able to buy or sell in this world without taking the mark as it's described so i said chipped there but what it says is taking this mark and it says the mark will either be in the the hand or the forehead 
and this this mark will bear the number of the beast's name and it says the number is 666 that's where that comes from if anyone was wondering who didn't know you know and some of my listeners didn't quite understand why 666 was a big, big deal because it's 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 a gematrian number of the name of the of the beast who will come the, um, the antichrist the false ruler the false messiah um, the one who will make the whole world believe they are Jesus himself because of the miracles he will perform okay but this person will basically convince everybody maybe force it could be a force but I reckon this will be a willing choice by most people it will convince them that this is a good idea you will need to take my mark and this taking this mark will give you benefits and advantages that are in your best interest um so we, you know, I was talking about this RFID chip, and you wonder if this fits the bill because it just seems kind of uh, a bit too obvious, you know. And I don't—I I feel sometimes I feel like the thing, the most obvious thing, usually isn't the thing, you know. And uh, maybe that's my own paranoia kicking in <laughs> because I've been doing this for so long. Um, but usually, when people make predictions in the conspiracy realm, they don't often come true, and it's usually something completely out of left field that actually happens in the end. Uh, so I'm keeping my eyes peeled for, for something else, you know. But if, if you just examine this RFID chip and compare it to this description in Revelation, it is eerily similar, you know, because it is implanted in the hand. And they sell this chip to the people, you know. They say, well, you know, um, all your information will be in one, in one place. Um, I was looking through recent news about this, and um, in Sweden they've trialed that... Um, They've trialed this idea that all medical records go on there now onto this microchip. Um, it's kind of like they're trying to get encourage more and more people to get the microchip. And I think in Sweden today, or at least in 2001, it's um, 6,000 people had been chipped in Sweden alone. Um, but I was looking at global statistics, and I think this is only from May uh, 2023, but it says today over 50,000 people have taken the microchip into their body, implanted it, the chip into their hands. You know, and and you look into people who do this, and there was TED talks, you know, a decade about a decade ago, where they were advertising this to people, trying to say, "Oh, isn't this so cool?" You know, and they had this woman holding up this microchip, saying, "It's this the size of a grain of uh, of of, of uh, rice." You know, it's nothing, it's nothing. And we'll put it under your skin, you know, and you'll be able to just swipe it over a card machine and pay for your pay for whatever you want. You know, you'll be able to uh, use it as a personal key to unlock your car, to get into your house, or get into work. Um, it'll be all personalized to you, your own code, your own frequency. Um, all your medical records will be on there, you know. Uh, so if you have an emergency, you end up in the in the emergency room with no ID. They can very quickly just scan your chip and know everything about you, all your medical history. And, you know, there's always a bit of sugar to go down to take this bitter thing, you know. And it, it's sold as a good thing to us. And, and people, from what I've researched, are doing it. You know, there are those out there who may not consider the consequences of their actions in a spiritual sense or are fully on board with with the with this coming B system you know but they uh, they 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 willingly give themselves over to it and allow this thing to go into them not perhaps being naive to the fact that if if everything ends up on this chip everything personal to you including your access to your money and then you have put yourself into a prison basically where someone else holds the keys um like i said if, if you one day decide to say something that goes against the agendas at play um they could just turn off your money just turn the chip off what do you what are you going to do you know you'll starve you can't buy food you can't pay the bills you'll end up homeless on the streets and then everyone will just think uh, you're crazy <laughs> no one will pay attention to you um and you'll just be one of those people, people walk past in the streets begging for money and fizzle out, you know. That's that's the plan, basically. And so is the RFID chip the mark of the beast? I don't know. Because a lot of things seem to need to come first before um, that gets implemented. So, you know, we need to see these, these people on the world stage by prophecy standards first. So we need to see this great ruler come, who's like this mighty leader who we will witness take a serious blow to the head and then survive and we'll we'll be in awe of this and then we need to see this other false prophet rise who will then make everybody worship the first beast or an image of this first character 
um, before everyone has to take this mark, you know. And by this point, everyone will, wi the whole world will take the mark. And, you know, supposedly, what is it now? Seven billion people on the planet, maybe more. Um, probably is eight billion now, you know, and only 50,000 have taken it. I don't think we're quite there. I don't think that's what's going on. But it's worth speculating and just being weary about this. You know, I, I personally don't want to take anything into my own body uh, that they tell me I need to take. Um, and I think we have we have seen with the recent events of this this global thing that happened, you know, a year or two ago, where everyone was told to put this thing into their body, <laughs> and people did. About ninety percent of people around the world who were told to did it without question, you know, and those who didn't were ridiculed, ostracized, attacked, and called evil. I think we all know what I'm talking about here, okay? And I think we've seen an example that uh, if this did happen, if say, so, say some horrible global event happened, you know, um, and we were told the only way we're going to be able to save ourselves and humanity is to get chipped, then people will do it because they've been told that's the only way they can be safe. And, you know, people just want safety and security at the end of the day. That's all they want, you know. And I think it says in the end days, you know, when they say peace and security... Uh, that's you, that's when sudden destruction is about to come upon everybody. I think it even says that in the Bible. <laughs> so, um, it, it's just it's just it's interesting to speculate about. But we have to also consider that the RFID technology is being subtly introduced to us through other means first. Okay, so it's not just they've already told us that they they can you can implant the chip, and some hardcore people have gone for it. Uh, but before we get there, they're buttering people up for the idea. And they've um, obviously over the past decade introduced a contactless payment with with uh, debit and credit cards. Now in England, this came first, um, way before America. We've had this for a long time now, a very long time. It's basically a standard, um, and I think America may be catching up now. But it took a long, t uh, an extra few years before America actually got all this. Um, but contactless payment is now just just the standard in our country. Uh, less and less, more and more places are refusing cash and, and it's it's um it's card only now you know um and obviously with what the recent event that happened that was a huge way to say everything has to be contactless to stop the spread of germs you know um so that definitely uh, gave a kick or a boost to to the whole contactless payment thing and it's it's the same technology inside your card that they want to put inside your hand it's it's a um, a radio frequency uh, chip basically yeah, that's that's what it's all about um and it gets you used to it the idea doesn't it um just just tapping the card tapping the card you know um and that's all you have to do to pay now you just tap the card on the thing and that movement that they're kind of getting you to do is the same movement you're going to do with your wrist once the chip's in your hand you know they also sell uh, smart watches that do the same thing you know so you can just put your wrist to the thing and that that's okay right now, but that obviously needs this extra piece of technology, the card or the watch or the phone. Okay, so your phones do it too. Um, and the idea is to, to to ease you into it. You know, it's like a boiling pot technique. <laughs> so when the chip finally comes, you can say, oh, finally, I can get rid of this card. I don't need to carry around this cumbersome wallet anymore. You know, it's that kind of thing. They're, they're, they're slowly um, introducing it to the public. So we're in early stages, but it does it does seem like this RFID chip is a huge contender for the Mark of the Beast. Um, it's one to watch. But I've also heard people argue that it's all spiritual. You know, it's a spiritual thing. It's uh, the whole idea of the of the of the is it the right hand and the forehead is is your actions and your thoughts. It's symbolic of your actions that you do with your hands, the things you perform, and the things you do, and obviously the, the way you think will be perfectly aligned to the beast system. Um, and that is the mark. The true mark is a spiritual mark, um, which is bizarre. You know, it's a bizarre thought. Because I, it could go both ways. I, I don't think it's one or the other. I think there will be a literal thing. And I think it also will be a spiritual issue, personally. Um, I, I think those who will take the mark as, let's say, a chip 
are already well ingrained mentally and and with their actions into the system that's how it will go and those who refuse you know as we saw with those who refuse to take certain things into their body recently for good reason you know um those who refuse will be demonized heavily uh, maybe even killed in this last time because they'll be considered dangerous dangerous to mankind because they're the ones not taking the mark and if they don't take the mark we all die it's that kind of attitude you know so it's best just to kill them for the greater good you know in a proper cult fashion so it's it's a weird it's weird to think about definitely but it could just be a spiritual thing it could be um but i, I at the end results the same you know it's full submission to this um this system but the only thing i'd say about the spiritual issue is i don't see how having a spiritual mark on your soul within your mind and your actions means you can't buy or sell um i feel like people can't read your mind you know and they're not gonna know whether or not you're aligned to their agenda or not and then just refuse to sell you something based on you know you I think there has to be something physical that um, makes it possible to to hinder the ability to buy and sell things. So I do I do think it, it may be pro a physical mark. Um, I think there's this other idea as well. And I was talking with um, uh, uh, Vicky Anderson, and she was on my channel recently this week. I did a, a chat with her, and uh, she's a very insightful person, and she's done a lot of thought and speculation into these things, like I have. And during our discussion uh, last Wednesday, and the live show is on my channel if you want to listen, but we went into AI and artificial intelligence. And we were trying to figure out what the end game is for that as well, you know. And I do think there's some ties here, because we talked earlier about how the, the second beast that comes that will have horns like a goat, but speak like a dragon. So it, um, like a lamb, should I say. So... It will come posing similar to like a Christian as like a part of the flock, you know, but it will speak like the serpents. So the things it will say will be aligned with Satanism and the Luciferian agenda. Uh, but it will come posing as like um, a prophet of God, you know, on the side of God and Christianity type of thing. And it will make people worship the image of the beast or make, make, an, make an image of the beast and idolize and worship it. And it's, it's just a bizarre phraseology, but when you consider how technology works today, maybe there is some kind of um, augmented reality um, hologram or projection that we people will be able to create through artificial intelligence, you know. And they will create a friend, a, a artificial intelligent copy or version of this Antichrist figure, you know, that can be your friend. who have these things like AI friends now, you know. They have the ability to... I think there was even a Black Mirror episode about this, you know, where you can input loads of information about a certain person into this into the system and it will then be able to be that dead relative or, or something. I think that was the plot of it, you know, this guy wanted to make his wife come back or something. So this idea is you, you feed enough information into it and then it can then be that person and, and it'll seem as though that person's talking back to you how they would respond because this AI has learned enough about all the inf from the information you fed into it about this individual that it could copy it perfectly and i think that i think we're, we're getting there because that's how ai works it's a machine learning algorithm you know it, it it takes in inputs and then adapts based on the inputs and then it, it constantly um, through trial and error it learns the correct response and the correct way to be and say so it could it be that what these biblical people you know were trying to from their perspective a long time ago trying to describe in their visions is something very actually real to us today and it's this this technology of uh, virtual reality and and artificial intelligence so i do think it seems like we're in a time very close to these things coming to be but when i say close it's a relative term maybe it's maybe it's in 10 years maybe it's in 100 years before we fully get to that level where all these things could truly unfold you know it says that the beast will also be able to make fire rain down from heaven um during this time and people will marvel at this ability he has you know and is that any different than let's say space-based weapons <laughs> you know um 
are we there yet? Do we have space-based weapons where someone at just the click of a button can just make a beam of fire come from the sky and just destroy anything at any time? Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't think we've seen anything like like that yet. Um, no, we've seen something similar, like you know, multiple missiles being fired from one place to another, perhaps. But this is saying coming straight from the sky, from the clouds, you know. And I don't think it just means a plane dropping something, like a bomb. I think it's something a bit more uh, terrifying, you know, uh, a bit more like once you see it, it's kind of like, well, what do we do now? We can't, we can't stand against this kind of power. It's that kind of stuff, you know. Um, which is, again, one of the many reasons why, through fear, people will just accept whatever this, this beast says um, and will take the mark. Uh, so I do think artificial intelligence will play a huge role in whatever comes to be. I do think um, it, it could be the case, and this is what we're speculating with Vicky, um, that this goes hand in hand with transhumanism as well. So there is this agenda, you know, that the, the Nephilim spirits um, want... A, want to be embodied once more so to do that you know they, they need <sighs> either we need to build a new body for them okay or they want our bodies that's basically it. there are only two options so i've said it before but this is what possession is all about this is what demonic possession is so a demon will possess another person because it wants to experience senses again smell sight taste sound touching everything about you know everything about being in a body it craves you know it wants to indulge in the pleasures of the flesh to get all weird about it you know um so what it does is possess human beings in order to experience whatever they're experiencing vicariously now the best form of possession is where the person doesn't know they're possessed so it will dwell in somebody and try its best not to be known that it's within somebody Okay, so it'll make the person accept their demons, basically. And um, there are side effects to being demonically possessed, but it'll make the person think it's normal. And these usually manifest as illnesses of many kinds, you know. But it'll make the person think it's their fault, you know, or because they haven't looked after themselves properly or something, or you no, know, or that they've been just diagnosed with a, a terminal illness that they can't possibly, you know, that it's just dumb luck. It's just it just happens to them, and it's there's nothing they can do about it, you know. Um. I'm not saying all illnesses are demons, but there are side effects to demonic possession, which um, are signs, you know. But most people will will not know that's the case, so they'll be continuously indulging in things, sin, let's say, sinful things, overindulgence in certain things, um, at the behest of the demon within them, who's also experiencing those pleasures. And sometimes it can be legions of demons in one person. Um, if the vessel is willing to allow them in, even better. You know, because then they can manifest freely and control the body and the person allows them to because they don't mind them being in there and they won't make any steps or attempts to get them out because this is the issue with human possession, okay? They can get cast out through the name of Jesus Christ and the authority given to people by Jesus Christ through his ministry, you know? Um, if If people realize they have the power to cast the demon out of them, um, that's not good for the demon. It's just it's just not optimal, you know. So this is kind of their problem. They have this issue with human possession. It's just not it's not great. It's not an ideal thing because people can just get rid of them quite easily once they clue into it, you know. They have to maintain illusions and they have to work hard to maintain the body that they're parasitically feeding off of, you know. Um, so I theorize that this whole drive for transhumanism and the rise of AI is they're trying to build a cybernetic body and a, a cybernetic mind through artificial intelligence that can house consciousness like a human's consciousness or even like a Nephilim spirit's consciousness, a demon spirit. So once we've built this transhuman body for them, and obviously this is being sold as we will live forever in these new mechanical bodies, but I believe once the bodies were made, um, humans won't get to be in them. They'll just get inhabited by these Nephilim entities who have been manipulating mankind to create these bodies for them for a long time, you know. And once they're finally ready, they'll just go into them and probably rule as invincible, immortal gods once more, like they used to before they were wiped out before the flood, you know. Um, 
but now we've just built the bodies for them, which are indestructible and live forever and super powerful. <laughs> but Vicky had a different idea when I was talking to her, which I also thought was equally as interesting. Um, it's a different end game plan, you know. But what if we build all this transhumanist stuff? It's just nonsense, okay? And it'll go hand in hand with, let's say, building up a virtual realm in which we human beings can leave our own bodies and go to which is better than our world you know so i think people say like things like d-wave computer maybe working towards this you know quantum computing maybe working towards this concept of creating whole other universes separate from our reality in which we can move our consciousness to and live out our fantasies within um and that she and that, that's a great concept you know um and I do think people are working at that idea, though it's very primitive right now. If you look at virtual reality, it ain't that great, <laughs> to, be honest, to be honest, you know. Um, it's in its infant stages. But if they did manage to create a realm like that, where anyone can be whatever they want to be, can live out any fantasy they want in this virtual reality, and then people will go there and leave their bodies behind. And that then leaves the vessel open to be possessed by the demons to then inhabit the world once more in a flesh body just like they've always wanted so my theory was you know we'll build these transhumanist bodies for ourselves but they'll get hijacked before we have a chance her theory is that we'll leave our own bodies behind and go into technology that could be these vessels or it could be a virtual world and the real prize was our bodies all along because a synthetic uh, simulacrum pales in significance to the, to the godly designed vessel of a human body of a man's body you know a woman and a man's body which was designed by god himself it's far more superior spiritually and physically than anything man can build out of metal and synthetic material and the trick was we were made to believe our bodies were weak and pathetic and useless and these other bodies these other vessels are superior so we willingly hand ourselves over to this new vessel thinking we're having an upgrade when really we're downgrading ourselves into something that can be turned off <laughs> and short-circuited and easily manipulated and controlled um, while our bodies which are free from all that kind of stuff are now just given over to the nephilim demons who desire body once more it's uh it's a trippy concept and I, I loved the idea she came up with and i thought that was that's brilliant you know um and she reminded me when discussing this that i used to have this old theory years ago um and this is like a third option but i did imagine that people would create this virtual realm where maybe we'd put our consciousness into like a, a matrix you know that's what the film matrix is about isn't it but in the matrix they were put into this virtual world against their will or unknowingly but um in this version, it's more of a brave new world where people are willingly giving themselves over to these concepts. And I, I believe, you know, we have all these promises given to us that come to this virtual world, it's far better than your reality. You could live forever in this virtual world. You know, you could live like a god here. You can do miracles and you can have as much sex as you want. You know, you can do whatever you want in this world with no consequences. Come here, come here, join us, you know. And they'll show signs and of people live, currently in the realm, living out their fantasies. And you can watch live streams of it. It says, that could be you. You know, you could be doing this right now. Just, just upload your consciousness into the machine. Just do it. You know, leave this flesh body behind. You don't need it anymore. And, and that falls in line with Vicky's concept. But my theory was, and it was really cynical, is that when people do that, and this whole spectacle gets made where they get plugged into something and, you know, the conscious just leaves their body and the vessel stops being, um, well, stops moving. And then we're meant to believe, you know, they've now gone to a better place. They've gone into this computer. I theorized they've gone nowhere. They were just murdered. You just watch somebody die, basically. <laughs> and we're just being told that their consciousness has transferred into this computer, you know, and through smoke and mirrors... They make it convincing that that's the case, but um, they just murdered you. And now your body is empty with no spirit, no soul. And then it gets possessed by a demon. <laughs> that's basically all it was. That was the, that was the plan, you know. That was the, the whole point all along. Um, it was just lies. Just lies based on layers of lies. And I don't know. 
these are all my theories, you know, and, and I think what Vicky brought was quite interesting as well. And perhaps the Mark of the Beast could be a part of this whole AI system, this whole um, uh, virtual reality as well. Maybe a lot of what we saw in Revelations just was describing people um, living within an image of the beast. And the beast being being the kingdom of the devil, you know. And it says to make themselves an image of the beast and worship it. Maybe this is about creating an avatar within this fake realm. And that being your god from there on your, real, your reality, you know. It, I don't know, the speculations could go on forever with this one. Um, again, I do think the RFID D chip personally is a huge contender, though it's in its primitive stages. It's definitely something to look out for, but um, it could be a spiritual uh, mark. It could be a mark that will be a part of these virtual realms or have something to do with artificial intelligence. Um, but end times prophecy and imagery and symbology is trippy, you know, when you actually look into it. And I don't have the final answers to this one, but... It's definitely fun to speculate on. Um, and we do need to keep our eyes open and be careful with this. Um, anyway, guys, thanks for listening. Um, if you like what I do, um, you can always support me on Patreon. Link's down below. Um, I will. I may be releasing a video tomorrow, but I won't be able to do the usual Sunday live stream. Um, I'm on somebody else's podcast at the same time, but it won't be live, so you won't be able to listen to the podcast as I'm doing it. Um, so I may just release another quick video like this tomorrow instead. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed these random ramblings, and uh, like I said, I'll be back soon with more information. But uh, thanks for listening, guys, and as always, God bless.